Get out the sunscreen, folks. Tomorrow's forecast is tropical. Currently up here on the uh, rooftop, it's, oh, a balmy 28 degrees. The wind is out of the northwest at 22 kilometers per hour. And the barometric pressure is 101.7 kilopascals and rising. 101.7 kilopascals? You know, the barometric reading is one of those pieces of information we hear every day. And every day we trundle along, accepting it, without really knowing what it means or what it has to do with the weather report. Okay, if simple curiosity isn't enough to keep you from switching to another channel, let me offer you this. If you understand that number, you'll be able to tell if the weather around you is improving or getting worse. 101.7 kilopascals is a measurement of atmospheric or air pressure. That's right, the air around us exerts pressure. Let me demonstrate the power of the air pressure acting on us all right now. Let's see here. Okay, place tablespoon of water into can, heat till steam appears, then add chicken. <laughs> Wrong page. <laughs> okay, ah. place tablespoon of water into can, heat till steam appears, then quickly place can into pan of cool water. exerts no pressure, huh? So what did happen to the can? Well, heating then rapidly cooling the water created a partial vacuum in the can. Nature doesn't like a vacuum, so surrounding air rushed in to try and fill it. The force or pressure of the surrounding air pushing in crushed the can. Now I know what you're thinking. That's a neat trick, Mike. But what does air pressure have to do with this or this? Northern regions again, but the real story for uh, Newfoundland again tonight. Well, the answer begins with your typical weather forecast. Pay particular attention to those big letters on the weather map. The H represents an area of high air pressure, while the L an area of low air pressure. Changes in air pressure give you those highs and lows, and it's those highs and lows that determine what kind of weather we experience. So, if you're in the business of forecasting the weather, air pressure is essential. How does atmospheric pressure fit into weather forecasting? Well, in most of the weather stations in Canada, we use a mercury barometer to measure atmospheric pressure, and they're just like this one here. And they're really very simple instruments. They consist of a glass tube, which is evacuated, and the bottom is immersed in a pool of mercury. And the column of mercury rises and falls to balance the weight of the air on the pool. And to measure the current atmospheric pressure, you simply move the scale down to the top of the mercury column and read it off. And right now it's 100.0 kilopascals. Now, one pressure measurement from one weather station isn't much help in forecasting. But get air pressure measurements from more than 800 stations around the continent simultaneously, and you start to get a better picture of what's going on in the atmosphere. Once all the measurements have been plotted onto the map, it's time to connect the dots. Weather stations with the same air pressure readings are connected with a squiggly line, known in the weather biz as an isobar. Now, a computer usually does all this, but for the sake of demonstration, we thought we'd do it by hand. The isobars form patterns. A pattern with relatively high air pressures at the outside, leading to higher pressures at the center, is called a high pressure system, or a high. A pattern with relatively low air pressures at the outside, leading to even lower pressures at the center, is called, you guessed it, a low pressure system, or a low. Now, if you pay attention to your local weather forecast, you remember that highs generally bring clear sunny weather, while lows usually bring cloud, rain, or snow. Hmm, why do highs give you clear sunny weather and lows cloudy, rainy weather? Well, the answer centers on one of air's most fundamental properties. When it's compressed, it heats up. 
That's why the barrel of your pump heats up when you've been pumping up your bike tire for a while. Now conversely, when air is allowed to expand, it cools. Apply these principles to a larger scale, like the atmosphere, and here's what happens. In a high, you have cooler, denser air sinking to the earth. As it sinks, it's compressed by the weight of the air above. Now this generates heat, remember? Which evaporates any cloud cover in the area. That's why high pressure areas are usually regions of fairly clear skies. Now in a low, the air circulation is reversed air rises. As it rises, it expands. Now remember, when air expands, it cools. If the cooling continues long enough, and if the air contains moisture, the moisture will condense as cloud, which may lead to rain or snow. I can actually simulate this atmospheric phenomenon using just a few common household items. Let's pretend for a moment that this is the atmosphere. Now there's moisture in there because there's moisture in the atmosphere. Let's simulate high pressure first. Now do that using this pump. Remember in high pressure, you have air that's sinking. And as it sinks, it's compressed by the air above it. I'm compressing the air in here with the pump. Now when air is compressed, it heats up. And the heat evaporates any cloud or moisture in the air. So in high pressure, you get those clear, sunny skies. But in a low pressure, you have air rising. When air rises, it expands. When it's allowed to expand, it cools, condensing the moisture into cloud. So if high pressure brings nice weather and low pressure not so nice weather, it's probably useful to know if one of them is coming your way. And that's where a barometer comes in. See, it's more than just a nice decoration. So how does this thing work? Well, you see that black needle? That gives you the current pressure. And what you do is you take this little white needle and you put it on top of the black needle and then come back and say, uh, three hours and see how far the black needle has moved. Now, if the black needle falls, it usually means a low pressure is approaching. That's why it has rain written on that side. And if the needle goes the other way, if it rises, it usually means that a high pressure is approaching. That's why you see fair written on that side. So it's really the relative movement of the needle that's important. That's why in a weather forecast, they always say the barometer is steady or falling or rising. And the barometric pressure is 101.7 kilopascals and rising. Looking forward to it.